Good morning, afternoon, evening, or whenever you're watching this. Josh Sepnick here with the second episode of Faustinos. And I was actually going to do something a little different uh, today, but I just had a few people talk to me and just the urging of the spirit to discuss something that's very important, a uh, very prevalent false teaching, false movement. And it's something that is under the surface, even in many churches. So in 1 John 4, 1, we're told to not believe every spirit, but we're to test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. In Ephesians 5.11 says that we're not supposed to take part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather to expose them. And that's what we are doing here today. And we are exposing something. I will be exposing something, again, that most people have no idea or know very little about, and that would be Freemasonry. And most people, when they think of Freemasonry, maybe they think of the Shriners, the Beja, Beja Shriners, uh, circus or the hospitals, or maybe they think if they know of the Masonic Temple. Uh, but there are a lot more, there is a lot more to it than meets the eye. And I actually looked on a website that ha, uh, was by the Freemasons, and I was astounded to find out how many famous people were Freemasons. Remember, this is a website by the Freemasons. I'm just going to list off a, a handful of names. Um, Johann Seebach, who was the son of Johann Sebastian Bach, who was a dedicated Christian, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, he was a composer of classical music. Mel Blanc, who did many of the voices for Looney Tunes. Bud Abbott from Abbott and Costello. Santa Anna, who was the general of the Mexican army in the war, uh, Mexican-American war in, in 1848. Uh, Shackleton, who was the explorer who explored Antarctica, British explorer. Red Skelton did the Red Skelton show in like the 1950s and 60s, I believe. Uh, John Philip Sousa was a composer. Roy Rogers and Gene Autry, uh, singers and uh, actors and cowboy films, things like that. <clears throat> Irving Berlin, a composer in the 20th century. Silvio Berlusconi, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister of Italy. Um, pr some presidents of the United States, like George Washington, James K. Polk, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um, as well as Harry Truman. Uh, Winston Churchill, the great leader of Great Britain. Benjamin Franklin, one of our founding fathers. Simon Bolivar, which I'm sure I just screwed that name up, uh, liberator of South America from Spanish control. Buzz Aldrin, the astronaut. J. Edgar Hoover, who is the founding director of the FBI, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, and former Denver Broncos quarterback John Elway. And this is just a small sampling of the list of people that are confirmed Freemasons. So what's so bad about Freemasonry? And this is the question that I read on the internet that I've heard before. Um, and I'm not going to get into nearly all of it. And there are many other sources, and I'll list a few of them at the end that talk more about it. But it's so exhaustive that I may take 20 minutes today, but I'm not going to take more than that. And we're four minutes in, so we got to get moving. In 2019, Pew Research Center found that 15% of American adults, or at least the adults they surveyed, believed that Masonic rituals are not compatible with Christian teachings. Again, only 15%, or roughly 1 in 6, 1 in 7, believed that they are not compatible with Christian teachings. But... What are you to think of an organization that calls God the great architect of the universe and refers to the leaders of their lodges, the buildings where they meet to worship, refers to the leader of that not as a pastor or a bishop, but as a worshipful master? Uh, 
Steinmetz, who is a Masonic scholar, wrote this. Most of the truly great Masonic writers have deplored the lack of esoteric Masonic knowledge among the craft in general. The average Mason, so the average person that is part of this group, is lamentably ignorant of the real meaning of the Masonic symbols and knows as little of its esoteric teachings. So what he's saying, most of the people that are in there don't know much at all about the Masonic teachings and the symbols and what they really believe. And I'm going to be referring to this book here, Fast Facts on False Teachings. Great book. Get a copy if you can. This is Ron Carlson and Ed Decker wrote this. Uh, Ed Decker is a former Mormon and actually uh, was involved for a while also in Freemasonry. And they, they talk about different cults in this book, and they take about 20 pages to talk about Freemasonry. Well, what's wrong with Freemasonry? First of all, one of the big things is it's a secret society with secret oaths. What are some of these oaths? Hmm. The first level of the Blue Lodge of the Masonic Temple says this. The person who's entering into the Blue Lodge has to say this, binding myself under no less a penalty than having my throat cut across, my tongue torn out by its roots, and buried in the rough sands of the sea. Uh, to move on to the second degree of this Blue Lodge. Binding myself under no less a penalty than having my left breast torn open, my heart plucked out and given as prey to the wild beasts of the fields, and the fowls of the air. And finally, to get to the third degree, binding myself under no less a penalty than that of having my body severed in twain, my bowels taken from thence and burned in ashes. God's word says, here's what Jesus Christ said in Matthew 5, 33 through 37. Again, you have heard it said, that it was said of old, you shall not fear, swear falsely, but perform to the Lord what you've sworn. I say to you, don't take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. So again... <laughs> Don't be taking oaths and certainly not secret oaths. James 5.12, above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes, your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Well, more than just being a secret society with secret oaths, there are also many occultic symbols. These are often taken from the Egyptian, the Greek, and the mystical traditions, such as the all-seeing eye. Pyramid, Phoenix, Hexagram, Obelisk, and many more. A lot of what you'd be familiar with occultic symbols or uh, Illuminati symbols. One of the most disturbing things uh, is the involvement of people in the Shriners and thinking that they either that they're not part of the Freemason or if they are that they're not as serious. And one of the symbols of the Shriners that every Shriner wears is the Fez. Well, what is the Fez? The Fez came about in the 8th century when Islam was first coming about, was first really starting to spread. Islam did not start until the 7th century. So Muslims overran the Moroccan city of Fez, and they shouted, There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. They butchered Christians. And after doing that, when the streets ran with the blood of these Christians, many of them dipped their hat in the red. And that's where the fez came from. And in fact, you'll see many ties with false religions. And one of them is Islam with Freemasonry. You'll see the crescent moon and the sword, which are symbols of Islam. Uh, Freemasonry te teaches that there are many ways to God. Well, what does Jesus say in John 14, 6? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Acts 4, 12. 
Peter's preaching, he says, there's not salvation in any other. There's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 5, there's one God, one mediator, one go-between, between God and man, that is the man, Christ Jesus. And this is certainly not what the Freemasons believe. <clears throat> they teach that they, they want to bring all religions together. In fact, uh, Joseph Ford Newton, in his book, The Builders, which is a very popular book among Freemasons, says that the goal of Masonry is to bring about a universal league of mankind and form mankind into a great redemptive brotherhood. Um, Albert Pike, who was a gr huge influential leader in Islam, or excuse me, in Freemasonry. In fact, uh, his book, Morals and Dogma, uh, was quoted by the Sovereign Grand Commander, C. Fred Kleinecht. He said that Morals and Dogma is the most complete exposition of Masonic philosophy there is. Again, you want to know about Catholicism, you go to the teachings of the Pope, the bishops, their catechism. You want to know about Islam, you go to the Quran and their other so-called holy books. You want to know about Seventh-day Adventism, you go to Desire of Ages, Pearl of Great Price, stuff written by Ellen G. White. You want to know about Freemasonry, morals and dogma, your ultimate authority. What does Pike say on page 311 of that book? We belong to no one creed or school. In all religions, there is a basis of truth. In all, there is pure morality. All teachers and reformers of mankind we admire and revere. Masonry has her mission to perform. She invites all men of all religions to enlist under her banner. He goes on to say they revere all, um, including Moses, Confucius, Zoroaster, Jesus, uh, and, and more. And also, Pike says, the first Masonic teacher was Buddha. He said on page 277 of Morals and Dogma. Uh, so again, they're of the belief that God is simply the great architect of the universe, that there are many ways to God. This goes straight against Christianity, and in no way, that alone should say, I do not want to be part of this if you are a Christian, if you truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, Masons, though, they, they go on to say that even though all religions can lead to God, at the same time, that only Masonry has the light. <clears throat> so Newton, that I, I just quoted a minute ago, Joseph Ford Newton, uh, he says that Masonry seeks to change the world because Masonry teaches that all non-Masons are living in spiritual darkness. The ritual of masonry for the first degree, the entered apprentice, teaches a candidate that he has long been in darkness and now wishes to be brought to the light of masonry. The lodge teaches that only true masons are enlightened and live in the truth. What does the Bible say about that? The Bible says uh, that Jesus, in John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And then he talks about John the Baptist being a witness to that light. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. And that light was Jesus Christ. Ed Decker, who I talked about, former Mormon, uh, former even Freemason, he said, there is no light except the light of Jesus Christ. Freemasonry is actually a journey from light into increasing darkness, not the other way around. And it should be mentioned also while I talk about the Mormon Freemason thing with Ed Decker, that Joseph Smith was a Freemason as Freemasonry was around for a while before Joseph Smith began Mormonism. So there is ties in with that as well. All right, so the goal of Masonry. We had talked about the light of Masonry and the truth. Uh, but Pike says on pages 104 and 105 of his book, Morals and Dogma, Masonry, like all the religions, all the mysteries, herm herm hermeticism and alchemy conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages or the elect and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols 
to mislead those who deserve only to be misled, to conceal the truth which it calls light from them and to draw them away from it. Truth is not for those who are unworthy or unable to receive it or who would pervert it. And this is the same type of thing that Islam, for example, teaches that they will not uh, tell the truth to unbelievers, but they are allowed to lie to them. But if you really read what is in the Quran, you will see that it does teach many terrible things. But again, the goal, uh, there, it's trying to hide the truth from those who do not believe in it. Is it a religion? If it's a religion, therefore it will be incompatible with Christianity, right? Because the Christian religion uh, will be incompatible with any other religions. And so if it's just some club or something you can join, maybe that would be allowable. But is it a religion? Let's go to The Authority, Albert Pike. Once again, page 213, Morals and Dogma. Every Masonic Lodge is a temple of religion, and its teachings are instruction in religion. Uh, Pike goes on to say that Masonry is the universal, eternal, immutable religion such as God planted it in the heart of universal humanity. Again, teaching universalism. That's page 219 of Morals and Dogma. So again, its goal, it is a religion, and its goal is to bring all religions together. So Masonry, who is the God of Masonry? What we, we establish it's a religion. We establish that it's not compatible with Christianity because of that. But masonry, and it'll even use the Bible. That's the thing. In fact, John Ankerberg, a Christian apologist, he says masonry uses the Bible, but deletes Jesus' name from scripture references. And that's the huge thing. That's the important thing. <clears throat> So there's actually a god, a deity of masonry that is revealed in the Blue Lodge Masons uh, during the ritual of the Royal Arch Degree. It says the deity of masonry is Jabulan, or Yabulan, which is Ja, or Ya, is the form of Yahweh, a shortened form of Hebrew name of God, Yahweh. Bol is short for Baal. Of course, the false deity and on was the term that the Babylonian mystery religions used to call on the deity Osiris. So it is a blasphemous mix of the God of the Bible along with false gods Baal and Osiris. In the 17th degree of the Scottish Rite, uh, candidates complete the initiation. They're given the secret password, Jubalum, and the sacred word Abaddon. Here is the clue to the true identity of the Masonic deity. It is revealed in the sacred word of this ritual, Abaddon. So in Revelation 9-11, we learn that the demons and the workers from hell had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon, Satan. So, who is this god that they worship? Satan. What should our response be? And this is really key, I think. This is just so important to think about. What should our response be? And Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? What fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. I will be their God. They will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. That's 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17. Uh, and Elijah on Mount Carmel, in that contest with the prophets of Baal, interesting as Baal is one third of this so-called deity of Freemasonry. But he's saying, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. 
And in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, we're told you can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You can't be at the Lord's table and at the demon's table. There are many uh, Christian leaders who have denounced Freemasonry. I couldn't find an exhaustive list, uh, but suffice it to say that many of Pretty much all of the Bible-believing denominations and churches, movements and things throughout church history in the last few centuries since Freemasonry has come up anyways, have denounced it. D.L. Moody talked against it. Elva McLean, Walter Martin, that great authority on the, cult, on the cults, Charles Finney, many others saying it's not of God. But then people started to get soft on it. And people even... Uh, in the whole denominations and in a landmark decision back in 1993 so about 30 years ago the southern baptist convention which by this point has become terribly apostate if you're part of that please get out of it um it said that it was a matter of conscience whether you wanted to be in the lodge or not and that's after they researched it for like a year um, and that is a terrible decision. It is not a matter of conscience. If you are a true Christian, if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you need to get out and get out yesterday. Um, and that would be whether you're in Freemasonry, part of the lodge, if you're a Shriner, you need to get out. And if you're not willing to, then you should really question if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, because again, these two things have nothing in common. Um, I'm sure I didn't talk. I missed a few points probably that I wanted to talk about. There's so much in my mind because this is such a broad subject. I hope this helps some of you. I'm going to post a couple of videos, shorter videos that'll help you. Um, Eric Barger, my good friend Eric Barger, uh, has he's an authority on many different teachings and cults and things going on in the discernment ministry. He's been in it for over 40 years now. Um, and he has an almost two hour video on that. I think you probably have to buy it, but um, on Freemasonry and on the Lodge, um, Freemasonry, the Invisible Cult by Jack Harris, another great book and um, Fast Facts on False Teaching, Ron Carlson and Ed Decker. Um, I highly recommend these books. And they'll give you much more information than I did and uh, hopefully it can get you to see if you haven't seen already. Um, I'd hope this would be 20 minutes at the most, went a little beyond that, but uh, God bless you. And uh, again, please, if you're in Freemasonry, in the Shriners, in anything, get out um, and get out now. And uh, may God bless you in your endeavor to serve him.